Here we go. Another one. Another one. Another we're one. back again. We say another one like they've seen the others for some reason. Yeah. It's only because well, we're recording them like this. Well, psy- psychology. See, if you say another one, then people are interesting. Oh, they must have other yeah. stuff. This is the bit where we should have a hook as well. Yeah, well, it is. Really I can do the, I can really do the Stephen Bartlett one again. I hope loads of people are watching. Uh, and if you are, go and please tell everybody because we lives. are desperate. Central. <laughs> desperate. So we are Dan and Mike from Biceps and Banter, and we're here to share with you how we've built our business to where it is today. Uh, and you can take this advice and you can use it, or you can tell us to go do one. It's completely up to you. Uh, we make no um, nothing from tell- telling you this sort of shit, yeah. do we? No, you can not unless you sign up for our coaching, of course. I mean, that's always an option. But yeah, that is an option. Um, in yeah. fact, we we do we we can give them something for free if they're on our Instagram. Go over to our Instagram. Yeah, go over to our Instagram. We've got a free lead magnet there. So. We've got a free lead magnet. You know, that's what we call you it. should know what a lead magnet is. You should know what that so, is. If you don't, then. we're literally talking to the demographic that should know it. So I'm yeah. not going to tell you what it is, but it's for online coaches. It's for free, uh, and it's quite a lot of value. So for figuring out your niche, that's what it is. I'm going to tell go. you. I don't mind telling you. You can keep. You keep it a secret. Don't? There you go. Do okay. a little secret. Anyway, so in this video, we're going to talk about why we don't charge up front and why we haven't charged up front, um, and why it's actually been all right for us. You will never honest. get anywhere not charge not uh, charging up front. Yeah, you're never going to grow a business unless you charge up front. I saw two. I saw, proved you wrong didn't I saw, we? yeah well we got we got told that so um we basically had a, a, a consultation call with a business mentor about two years ago didn't we mm. and um he basically said you need to charge i think he said something like 2400 for a package he said you need to change your offer you need to change your offer mm. um don't know do we and it just didn't sit right and obviously we didn't work with him um because we were just the like, funniest thing about that, as I remember, is that he was sat on a call like that and he kept looking off to the side, like he's reading his sales script. Yeah. And he's like, so what I'm hearing is, yeah. you're struggling with this. And we're like, no. no, we haven't said that at all. No, 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 no. we didn't say that. No. Well, yeah, but no, but what I'm hearing is that, you know, one of the big problems is this. Well, no, that's not my no. problems. No, it's not what no. we told you at all. Yeah. <laughs> so he just had a script to read just, out, didn't he? <laughs> do you know what? It, it's better because there's two of us. Do you know, like, I can imagine if you're on your own. Yeah. And they're almost in this position of power a little bit, and you, you're the one that's wanting some advice. I can imagine that you probably do feel a little bit more pressurised. Like whereas we were just like we got each other, so we we're just like nah, nah, it's nah, not <laughs> nah. But yeah, and I, I, I literally saw two posts last week about this actually. That no, uh, I think um, I think the video that I saw was no online coach should charge monthly recurring. Bold claim. So we're not here to say don't charge up front. This isn't the thing. No, this isn't. Th- we're not. We're not going to say don't charge up front. You can charge up front if you Do want. Do what you want. I've got a particular client who pays me a year up front, like because he wants to. I've got other clients who might pay me six months up front because they want to. But ninety nine percent of the people that, that we have coached probably pay us monthly recurring. But, we, but you can't do that. You can't. You can't grow a business like that. You can't yeah, do you it. Can't you can't do, do it. It's impossible. And and look, it's and for me, it's a sign of if anyone talks in that language, you kind of know that. They're just trying to do it for Can't effect. Can't lose weight eating carbs. Yeah. They're just trying to do it for effect, that, right? It's like that, right? It's, it's the same. Yeah, it's exactly the same. It's the it's same exactly the same. Is, is, is what it was. And it's, Anyone who says you can't do anything is wrong because you can. Yeah. Because there's this grey area in the middle but where the, the thing can. that fascinates me about this is that they, these are people who are in fitness, right? And they've they've transitioned, much like we have, I suppose, in the, in the sense of we're trying to share what we've done. But they're talking about it in the same way that they would never talk about nutrition. You know when you see, you would never say, you can't eat carbs. No, nah, can't eat carbs. If you have someone come along, and go, oh, I got told by an ex PT that I couldn't eat carbs. You go, well, he's a fucking idiot. Yeah. Well, not not putting words in my mouth, but <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not about that. It's about you can make anything kind of work. It's just about what you're prepared to do and how you're prepared to go about it. And when we hear people say that you can't build a business, charge them up for your career, and we kind of go look at each other and go, what? Yeah. <laughs> well, what have we done then? Like, yeah. How have we it, managed that then? It, it, so, it, it's funny. It's funny because some of the business mentors that are saying you need to charge up front. Didn't. Never charged up front. Yeah, they didn't. Like, that's the thing. Like, when they had their own business, they never charged up front. They just did monthly recurring. But, so, get, but now they want a Stripe screenshot. Yeah. Wow, that's more important now. Yeah, guess who benefits from that? Yeah, who benefits from that? Yeah, so it's funny that, that, that <sighs> we've seen people never charge up front. Never. Uh, and now you have to charge up front. Yeah. But yet their, their coaching the funny, business was so successful. The funniest one as well is, the funniest one that I think with this is when they do that and they get you, they get you to charge up front, right? They get your screenshot and they go, oh, you got a 10K month. Coach now owns 120k. It's like no, no, no. no. They've had one month left. Like let's wait and see where the year goes first, shall we? Yeah. And it's that whole thing of like I help coaches get to six k, six six figure, you know, yearly income or whatever. And they base that off one Stripe screenshot and they yeah. multiply it by twelve. It's like, that's not how it works, mate. Yeah, no. That's not how it works. Especially they when paid the- you for the next three months' work. Yeah. So you better do it. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you're earning three grand a month. There you go. Oh. And only for three months. 
So, um, but one of the arguments in that, right? So, so let's talk about this. Let's talk about the, the specifics of it. So one of the arguments was, uh, or is, sorry, with charging up front, one of the arguments in that, in that video that we saw was um, that it's anxiety inducing each month, not knowing whether your clients are going to drop in, drop off, whatever it is. How many are you going to get? Whether they incorrect. all drop off and this sort of stuff, right? And I would counter that with, yeah, but when someone pays up front for three months, right? Let's say they pay three months, we'll grant up front. You've got the anxiety at the end of that three months as to whether they're going to sign up again or not. And also, not only that, the anxiety is higher because you've got to then sell them another thousand pounds, which is a bigger lump sum. And you've got to hope they're going to commit. And you've got to hope that you've done a good enough job over those three months that, that they've done that they've done the work that they required or whatever, right? The, so you've got the same anxiety at the end of the three months. The only uh, reason why that would be applicable is if your current retention rate was less than three months. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the only scenario where yeah. that is applicable. So. Yeah, it begs the question then where you go well don't have a client retention rate of under three months which you shouldn't do if you're a good coach um, so then it would be rare that somebody drops off in three months right like we all know this that, that would be a, a rare thing so you probably don't have that anxiety in the first few months because you don't expect them to go anywhere because it takes time to see some, some results mm. um, so that anxiety shouldn't shouldn't be there and something that they just I don't know why they can't think about this or why they just don't know that but we have a, a 30 days notice period yeah so it's a bit of common courtesy a bit of goodwill that's built into our expectations so we have a, a list of client expectations about you know when to check in you know how to check in uh, you know and then we have expectations from our side so it's, you'll always receive your feedback on the correct day you, you know we'll be available for this we'll be available for that whatever we're entitled to this amount of holidays and then um, you know, like a proper business, you know, like a proper actual running it properly. And then um, if you build into your expectations, must provide 30 days notice of termination, which is fine, like, because you're going to give somebody a great service, you're going to go above and beyond. And most people, when they come to, to end their coaching, they'll go, hey, Mike, uh, just so you know, this is going to be my last month because, you know, either A, we've kind of come to a natural conclusion, you know, B, finances, whatever it is, you know, the natural reasons why somebody mm. might leave your coaching. But you've got 30 days then, so then you go, okay, well, I know that that space is, is free. So now I can start to ramp up a little bit more content on social media, maybe engage a little bit more in, in people's DMs mm -hmm. or whatever. And then it gives me time to then get a call with them, get them on board, get them set up so that there's actually no lag in between it. So there's no big drop. Like, so yeah. it's a really nice, smooth transition. But I don't think that business mentors have, have thought of this for some reason because it doesn't stand up. They think yeah. that people are just dropping off like flies. I think, I think with it as well that there's this assumption then that obviously with the <coughs> the monthly upfront, uh, sorry, the upfront payment is that you would always be shopping for clients. You'd always would be because the natural thing is, well, after three months, they're probably going to go, you know, that sort of thing. And that seems to be the, the, mm. the, 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 the narrative anyway. Um, and look, I'm not saying that after three months, people won't re-sign up again. And you may, after those three months, sign up to monthly recurring, which is ironic, um, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> They talk about that a lot. Um, so why bother at the start then? Um, <laughs> it. Yeah. It's ironic. Well, why not sell another free package? <laughs> yeah, if just that's another the case. three months then, like you know, and and, and I think you're wrong. Like, some people will sign up again, but but you're giving you're you're creating another financial decision in their head. They've got to then think about it again. And again, there's there's arguments for and against. Like we're not sitting here saying never do it. If you want to do it, go do it. We're just talking to you why we don't think it's right for us in our business. You can then make your own decision on that. But for a few reasons. Number one is that. People pay their money up front. If you pay a grand up front, I'm expecting a fucking result. Yeah. If I pay you a thousand pound for months work, I'm expecting a result. We've done it before in the past with other things and it's flopped and we've gone, well, that was a fucking waste of time. If we were paying more monthly, you're, re you're reminded every month, right, we're still doing that. We've still got to pay for that. I'm still going to make sure I do the work for it, right? So this element of this sunk cost of people pay the money and then they forget. So if after a month, they're not really seeing results they really want, they'll drop off. Now you tell me, watching this, I don't know. I think you know when which, which client's going to drop off. After a month, two months, you're going to know if they're if they're in into it or not. And I think that by doing it up front, you get a lot more, you get a lot less buy-in from people because they paid that money and they go, oh, "Okay, I paid the money. Where's the result?" No, you get more buy-in. Apparently, apparently you get more. And again, look, this, there's arguments for and against. Again, maybe you get more buy, maybe you get less. But for me, I know once I pay for something, I then don't really think about it. And if it came to the end of that three months and I wasn't really putting the effort in, I wasn't really doing stuff, and if I was also using shit coaching methods where I wasn't checking in properly with people, fuck me, then, then definitely not going to bother yeah. because I'm not getting the touch points. Whereas with the monthly, they're reminded every month, okay, yeah, that payment's come out. Oh, I'm still working, Mike. Oh, shit, I better get on and do that. I just you told me to do that. I better carry on doing it. And it just becomes part of your budget on a, on a monthly basis, right? Like Mike said, you can offer to clients and say, look, if you want to charge up, if you want to pay me up front, that's fine. But the pain of paying for that money is gone. 
It's yeah. gone. So eight, eight weeks down the line, that pain of paying that money, you just gone. go, oh, I've, it's lost. I've, yeah. I've lost it now. Don't worry about it. Not a problem. Not going to think about that now. I'll move on to the next thing. And you've lo- you potentially have lost that client for that reason, rather than if each month it was factored into their, their outgoings, it's kind of like, okay, I'm still doing that. Much like with gyms and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's a bit of a different thing. I think if people paid up front for a gym, up front for a year, they, a lot less people would join it, in oh, my opinion. Yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. So... That, that's one argument that they will say that you get more va- more buy-in, okay? And we don't believe that you do. What we believe that gets the most buy-in is being the best coach. That gets the most buy-in yeah. because you're going to get somebody a result. They're going to love love what you're giving them. They're going <clears> to <throat> enjoy talking to you and they're going to stay for longer. And the best buy-in is getting your client's results. That's the that's the, that's the best buy-in. Um, so <laughs> you don't have to do another sales call if you've got amazing yeah, results, people. <laughs> exactly. Um, so so that's one one argument. The second the second argument is um, the value thing because <clears throat> everybody's read Alex or Moses' book. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's the value thing. It, yeah. It's perceived as more value. It, it's, it's it's different. It's, you're setting yourself apart for the uh, online coaching. But again, well, you're not just, anymore. Yeah, yeah, not anymore. <laughs> no, yeah, everyone's yeah, doing it. Different. Yeah, <laughs> it's charging recurring is the novel one now. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's just mad. But again, it's just short sighted by business mentors. Again, just like how they miss you know, miss the fact that you could probably put in a clause where it's like 30 days notice, so then it stopped. So it just puts a fucking, that yeah. like, it extinguishes that argument straight away that you're just going to get people dropping off. But it's almost this one that it's like, okay, you need to, it gives it better value. But you can still charge a premium recurring monthly. Yeah. Like if the going rate is, let's just call it 150 quid a month, if you charge 300, then that's still a premium and there's still perceived yeah. value in that. Yeah. Like it's it's gone from like, well, you shouldn't charge 150 but you should charge a thousand. Like, yeah. it's gone from naught to hundred real quick. And, and the other thing as well about the, the charging up front is that it's just, it's, it's making them make another financial decision down the line. So three months down the line, they have to make that decision again. Rather than the first decision, can I afford 250 pound a month, 200 pound a month? Can I afford that? Yes, I can, thank you. Right, I can afford that. I put it into my budget, it's factored in. If you charge a grand up front and, and you know you want to position your your you know your your package as more value, more premium, in three months time, yes, you made a bit more money per month, right? But they've got to then make another financial decision. What have I got coming up next three months? Oh, I've got that holiday. I've got that. Actually, I can't really afford it now. Whereas if they'd have factored it into their monthly account, monthly amounts, then they would have already saving for that holiday. They're already saving for all these other things alongside it, right? Comes back to lifetime value again of your customer, right? But is you're making and making another decision. But not only that, you've got to then have another sales call, right? You've got to have another thing where it's like, you've got to kind of, and they've seen the product now. So if your product's dog turd, <laughs> yeah. right? And your coaching is shit, Uh-oh. that's a harder sales call. <laughs> Much harder sales call to do, right? So the first sales call is easy because they don't know what they're getting. The second sales call is fucking hard because if you are shit, you're not going to get that that sale. And in my experience, coaches aren't great at sales calls. I, if it was me, I only want to do one fucking sales call. I, I'm not great at them. He's better than me. But I don't like doing them. Coaches are good coaches, right? You don't need a fucking sales script and all that sort of shit. You should be good coaching enough. You should, your coach should be good enough, sorry, to get them to, to carry on. So coaches get anxiety enough with doing sales calls. Why are you going to put yourself in a position where you've got to broach that subject again mm-hmm. in three months' time? <laughs> Why would you? I wouldn't want to put myself in a position, even if it meant I got another 300 quid. Like, again, doing the upfront, if let's say a grand upfront for three months versus 250 a month, you're going to make in 250 extra by doing the upfront. I'd keep that money, keep the 250. I'd rather not do the sales call and just keep them going. Uh, for me, I'd rather do that. Yeah, and that Less anxiety inducer. But, but, but that's, that, um, that extra 250 is, is again... Uh, dampened out by the fact that they might stay for uh, even if they well, stay yeah. for one additional month well yeah exactly and, and I'd be confident that they would by the yeah. way like it's one of those things right and I just think that when we talk about they talk about oh, it's like the anxiety and the anxiety of worrying whether they're going to stay on or not I just don't get it no. I have, I'd have more anxiety of the yeah. well at the end of this three months they're going to go that would be my natural my natural it's, thought would be they're going to go it's incorrect I spoke to somebody last week and he said he's had 12 sales calls this past month in May which is pretty good pretty, pretty good going and he didn't sell one of them because he's charging up front and he said it was really nice and refreshing to come across our content he said because you're not saying what everybody else is saying. He said, I was made to feel like they make you feel, you know, in mentorships that you're inferior if you charge, do you know that if you charge a current, that's I, I don't li- mind being inferior. Yeah, that's, that's literally, that, that's what they're saying is that you're not good enough. They're saying you're not good enough if you can't sell up front. Like they're putting, like they're saying this kind of stuff yeah. and people could probably back me up here that, that are watching this. You will have been in groups where they make out that you're inferior um, if you're charging recurring monthly. 
But anyway. Oh, don't, don't, don't some of them after the initial month charge for recurring revenue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, they do, do they? Yeah, they yeah. do charge that. Yeah, I thought yeah. they might. Yeah. So we we'll just do that then? Thought They thought they might do that after just the initial payment. It's and, it, and again, I can't remember whether, I don't think it was this video that we spoke about um, the seven, eight grand month followed by, you know, months of nothing. So I'll say it again. So again, what we're seeing is, and you guys will know as well, because this will be hitting people, like this content will, will hit Not literally. People. Yeah. But it'll be like, you probably had a good month, four, five, six, seven grand month or whatever. And of course you're told to put it in the group. Of course you are. Um, why wouldn't you be? And it's banged straight up on somebody else's Instagram. But, um, but they don't put up the zero grand months that I know that you are having as well. Or the one grand month, which I know that you are having. Like you are having them. I know that you are. So the anxiety of not knowing what's coming next month doesn't allow you to enjoy if you've made a seven grand month. Because, well, I don't know what I'm going to get for next month. I don't know if I'm going to sign people up. I don't know if people are going to drop off. So you can't enjoy that seven grand or eight grand because that might need to last you X amount of time. Who knows? Whereas if you charge recurring, it's so predictable. Honest, honest, honest to God. I, the more it, we talk about it, the more I don't understand the argument. Because, do you know what I mean? Because I'm sitting there now thinking... Eight, can you imagine making eight grand? Yeah. I'm, and then going, well, I can't I'm, spend this. Because well, I'm sat here in my head thinking now, I'm thinking to myself, like, my best ever month, how far away, away from that am I now as a percentage, right? And I think from my best ever month... At this moment in time, I basically got there, right? And I was like, this is too many clients. I don't actually enjoy this. I'm just going to drop down slightly. I think it's about 10% lower, 15% lower. That's as much as my, and I've, from my high, and I've dropped down to 15% of my monthly recurring revenue dropped down, right? Which is still higher than where I was a year ago, which a year ago is higher than where I was a year before that. And a year before that was higher than a year before that. You don't have that flux of, good months, bad months, all this sort of stuff and having to average it out and work out where you're at with things. Like like Mike said, like if you know, like I've had this month, again, full transparency, I've had this month three people give me their notice now. So I know that I've got until the end of July, we're in June at the moment, right? Start of June. I've got to the end of July to go, right, well, by the end of July, I need to replace those three clients. I've got eight weeks to do it. Eight weeks to do it. Now, do you think in that eight weeks, I'm probably going to go, right, I'll post more content, more transformations, post a bit more and I'll get those three clients in. Yeah. Not, right, I've got 20 coming to the end of their three months uh, this month, so uh, shit. Um, what's going to happen? Well, maybe 10 of them will stay. Don't know yet, not broached the subject. I'm a bit nervous about doing it. Um, okay, cool. And then I've got to find 10, let's say, now on social media. That's quite tough. And I've got a month to do it. So let's, let's break it down. <coughs> let's do ease of maths. If you're going to get nine grand <coughs> um, up front for one month and you've had a nine grand month and then you're getting two zeros, right? Um, I would rather have three grand a month like it's the same money for the same amount of time I'd rather have three grand a month because mm -hmm. at least you know where you stand at least you can budget at least you can then look at okay what things can I do to improve stuff the nine grand up front and zero zero is the unknown it's daunting like I would rather go recurring and then every then every month unless you decide that I've taken on too many clients or you start to scale the business because Dan's reduced his recurring by 10 to 15 because this is then how you start to leverage your time. So all of the stuff that business mentors talk about. This is what happens. This is what they're teaching you the stuff that should happen down the line. So we're reducing our one-to-one -one clients because we have other areas of the, of the business now where we've been fortunate enough and grateful enough to build an amazing team of coaches that um, that help us coach in a larger amount of people still delivering great service. And you can leverage more time and you can charge a little bit more because you are a bit more exclusive. And don't forget, you've got fucking near enough 10 years of experience. Don't forget that as well. And the hundreds of, of transformations. Don't Not fresh that. out of your PT course charging thousands. But anyway, but anyway, so we would rather do that. So again, in, in Dan's thing, I'm at a record month every month. Just say it how it is. I'm at a record month every month. Uh, aside from the spikes of our group coaching launches, I'm at a record month every month because... As you, but if you get three drop, drop off, I can replace three, the, three of those people. But your prices should have gone up slightly in that time. So in theory, you're going to make a, a, better, a, a better month. Not by a thousand, but if I've increased my price by 20 quid from what they were doing, then it's still tw the 20 quid extra uh, uh, as such. So I'm on, again, full transparency, I'm on about 100, 100 clients. And I've had... I've got up to maybe 107 before in the past and I make more at 100 now than I did at 107 because my price is slightly higher. And at some point it's going to be 90. And at some point it's going to be 80. So like Dan said, it's, it's, the, it's the, 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 the thinnest margin of fluctuations on a month-to-month -month basis. The thinnest. It's like this. And I tell you what, you can sleep a little bit easier at night. You can sleep a little bit easier at night. 
Uh, yeah. And, and look, this is us. Look, we've never charged up front. So maybe if we change the way we do things, it would be really, really different. But we're sat here pretty confident knowing that when people say you can't build a business or no one should be doing it, but it's not true. It's just not true. Like, and, and I think that... I think that they're doing it just to try and uh, just to try and get an emotional response out of out of you to try and get you to change the way of doing things again to make it look better, make it sound better, all those sorts of things. And like, all our coaches do the same thing; they do it the same way. And again, like they've built up I've done, again, they've got a decent number of clients between them all now, and they do exactly the same way. And they prefer doing it that way as well. Like it's okay to want to do it that way. And I think that they're just trying to they're just trying to pattern interrupt your brain a little bit. They're just trying to make you think, oh, actually, if, that, if, that, if I think if I think incorrectly about that, I must be thinking incorrectly about all the stuff I do. So maybe I do need their help. Maybe I do need their advice with all this sort of stuff. The amount of people I've, I've had in my DMs saying that they make you feel like you can't leave because you need their help and you're not going to get anywhere. And I've, I've heard the word brainwashed multiple times. Yeah, cult. Cult yeah. is another one. Like, it's fucking mental. Like, and we'll we'll probably do some parodies and stuff like that and some, some jokey stuff about nah. trying to leave coaching. We've literally got one planned. That's why I'm saying <laughs> it. Um, it's probably been out by the time this comes out. But yeah, um, but yeah look, it's just, it's fucking mental. It's the, they, they try to grab you by the short and curlies and, and tell you you're doing stuff wrong and you're never going to grow. Because we had it. You're never going to grow. You're never going to grow. And at that point, we were sat there we were already doing a decent, you know, we, we had decent client numbers, you know, we, we had mm. coaches with us and stuff like that. And we were just like, well, you're incorrect. You're, you're wrong. Yeah. Everything you're telling us is wrong. Um, so our gripe is at, the co- is at the mentors that say, you should never charge recurring. You should never do that. You should never whatever. Um, because that's incorrect. It's not a, you should never. And then, and then ask yourself why they do that in their course after the first three months. Yeah. Ridiculous. So anyway, we'll leave it there. Like, share, subscribe. We've been Biceps Manta. You've been the best. You've been the best. So, yeah, go give us a follow.